Good morning. Good morning. Let's get uh, Instagram up. Give everybody a chance to see that I'm on. Good morning, guys. Say hi. Hold on, give me one second, guys. Have a good day, Raheem. I missed you guys. It's been a while. It's been so, so long. Good morning. Make sure you guys share this. Make sure you guys share this. Good morning. Gotta start the morning off right, right guys? Good morning. Good morning guys. Just can everybody just one more second getting everybody a chance so they can catch it from the beginning. With a way to start the morning, right? In the presence of God. Good morning. Good morning, Coco. Say hi as you guys are coming in. It's been a while since we did our mornings. I think like maybe a year. Let's just fellowship. Let's just get let's just get the presence of God. Let's just set our atmosphere this morning. Good morning. So we're up on Instagram and we're up on Facebook. Hi. Good morning, Maria. Cuz. Yes, Lachey, yes, praise God. Just setting this atmosphere while we're waiting for people. Just ministering to my heart all morning. It's just this song, it's just in my heart. I was like, I have to share it. Okay. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will make a way. He will make a way. I know it's a new year. And I know some of us are still 
dealing with the residue of last year. But let me tell you something. God will, he will make a way. He will make a way. And I think um, although so many people are screaming, um, new, new year, new me, um, there are still so many people who are still dealing with the residue of last year. In fact, the enemy really doesn't want you to have a clean sleep. You know, he, he, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So although in our mind, we have this aspect, you know, it's a new year, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. Satan is looking like not today. Satan is like, not today, not today, 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 today's not going to be a new day today. I'm going to hit you with them same reports that the doctor gave you with them same bills, with them same children acting up with the same spouse acting up the same job acting up today is not going to be a new day. And I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar. 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 So that, that's, that's where we're at with this. He, he, he's a liar and we're going to continue as long as God sits me here. He told me to sit here 6 a.m. Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursday. You guys know I used to do it. I, I believe the last, I, I want to say about a year or two ago. And, um, we have to get back to basics. We have to get back to basics. We have to get back to more than getting fit, fed off of, um, you know, spiritual posts and memes. We have to get back into the fruits of the word. So, um, with no more further ado, I'm just going to get into this word this morning. We, we're, we're going to do some, a lot of reading. This is more Bible study. Um, and then we're going to end it in prayer and we're going to begin in prayer because I believe in my heart that the depression the sustainability of the residue of the effects of what Satan is trying to do in our life is because we don't have no word in us. And if we had a, a, a great foundation in us, he wouldn't be able to do so many things that he's doing in our life. Even though all hell will be breaking loose, the Bible says that we're supposed to be counting on joys. We're supposed to still have this sense of peace that surpasses all understanding. And the truth of the matter is we truly don't have that peace that surpasses all understanding is because we don't have enough word in us. So this is my prayer. This is, this is my assignment in this season. My assignment is to make sure that we have enough word in us. Amen. So father God, I just come to you this morning, Lord. I just pray that the Holy spirit would just come in and surround the atmosphere, surround my atmosphere, surround the atmosphere of the person that's watching, whether it's live or in replay. Father God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. That is nothing that'll come out of my mouth. That are my words, my opinions, my thoughts, but I pray father God, that is all of you, father God, that it is you that will be speaking through me, that you will have a rim of word come out my mouth, the word that someone needs, that you will have me understand, have me break it down so that they can understand it because you said in everything that we are supposed to get understanding. Father God, don't let me be talking over anybody's heads. Let me talk as practical as I can so they can get this word and apply it to their life so they can have a foundation to withstand the schemes of the enemy. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your power. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you, although this country is not a great country, but it's great enough that we can come on here. Every country has its flaws, but it's a great enough country that we can come on here and we can fellowship in your name, Jesus Christ. So we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you will have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So, amen. I am just so excited. Baby, have a great day. Love you. you. So we're going to start with uh, 1 John and I'm going to start with chapter 5. I want to say verse 18. Now, the title of today's Bible study is, Who Are We? I wanted to make sure that we have a foundation. I feel the presence of God. I'm telling you, I feel the presence of God already. I wanted us to have a foundation of who we are, who we're supposed to be in the body of Christ, who we are supposed to be. What is it like to say that, um, that we're Christians, that we're kingdom builders? What is the, what are the precepts of the characteristics that we're supposed to have? Amen. So I felt like this would be a a great start. So this is first John chapter five. And, um, let's start with verse 18. I'm reading from the new Kings James version. Thanks sis. 
Good morning. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. So I want to start right there. First of all, what I love about that scripture, that whole passage right there, not only did it tell us that when you be born again of God, that you do not sin. Okay. You do not sin, but it says God himself keeps you from the wicked one and the wicked one does not touch you. So see, there's a covenant. There's a covenant. There's some, there's some things that the, the, that the world just cannot tap into when they don't have a covenant relationship with God. It is more than just saying God is good. God is great. Hallelujah. The man above. No, there's some rewards. There's some perks and having a personal relationship with God. So when you have a personal relationship with God, the evil one can't touch you. He might try to influence some things around you. He might try to uh, uh, um, manipulate you by people that are around you. But so to say yourself, he cannot touch you. So you'll say somebody might be thinking right now, but Fallon, what about the deaths or what about um, the sicknesses and things like that? But in James, it teaches that let the elders of the church pray over you and you shall be healed. So the thing that happens is when you see things manifesting that looks like anything contrary to the word, it has a lot to do with your belief. The Bible says that the just walks by faith. So, um, Hebrews 11, says, um, 11, seven says it is impossible to please God without faith. So the foundation of walking as a Christian, you are supposed to have faith. The whole thing is you are supposed to believe the word of God and you are supposed to believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again for your sins. Okay. Your foundation is faith. Your foundation is faith. I have to, I cannot stress that. We can, we can try to do all the habitual things that church folks say that we should be doing. But the truth of the matter is your foundation is faith. First of all, you got to believe that God is God. That's, that's number one. So if you believe that God is God, then you believe that he can do the things that he say he can do. Amen. Amen. So it says, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So another perk, okay, I, I, I'm going to make it as easy as we can understand. Another perk is that your eyes, your eyes, the veil is off your eyes. So while everyone else is walking and lacking self-control and, and depending on their job and depending on this one, that one, we are to be wholly dependent on God, right? And we are, and we are to see things differently. We have a different set of eyes than what the world has. Because this Bible here says that we know, verse 19, and we read it from 1 John, this is chapter 5, now we're on verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So what is that telling us? That's telling us that when you have a covenant with God, and the title is again, who are we? So we are children of God. And because we are children of God, our eyes are different. We see different. We act different. We speak different. So the Bible says here that anybody who does not have a relationship with God is under the sway of the enemy. That's why their fruit is lack of self-control, murder, upset all the time, lusting for things they can't be, you know, shouldn't be lusting. Everybody has this fleshly body. Everybody deals with, with you know, with, with, with certain things. But when you have a covenant and a relationship with God, he gives you a spirit of self-control because whatever you can't control, you call on him in the name of Jesus. God, I need you to help me with this, God. I need you to help me ki kill this spirit uh, of, 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 um, um, fornication or the spirit of cussing all the time, this spirit of, spirit of jealousy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself jealous. You know, we have a covenant with him. So our walk is different off the back when you say yes to Jesus. And then we know in verse 18, right? What does it say? We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. So you already know who's walking with God by the fruit does not sin. But he who has been born again keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. So now we're not sinning. We have God who helps us not to sin. 
And then the devil cannot touch you. You have to get that in your head. Too many of us are giving the devil credit anyway. Oh, Satan is doing this. Oh, Satan is doing that. Oh, Satan cannot touch you. But if you don't know the word and if you don't have enough word rooted in you, you walk around giving Satan the power. That's why it is so imperative in this season, in this season here, okay, as we're walking into the new year, in this season, we have to be girded in the word of God. We have to understand the power of the word of God. We have to understand the power that we have. We have to understand the power of faith. Amen. Verse 20, and we know that the son of God has come and has given us understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ. This is true. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So now he's saying, now he's telling us, first of all, to have a real covenant with God, you have to come to him as a little child. Because if you come to him filled with your own wisdom, filled with your own um, self-knowledge, okay, you're going to be, um, let me break it down like this. I was having a conversation the other day and I was saying that I noticed that when I was younger, right? Good morning, sis. Thank you. I remember when I was younger, it was so many things that I could find myself doing. I, I mean, I'll jump a turnstile. I'll jump off, you know, jump off the thing to get in the pool. Like I was just, I just had so much heart. Okay. I will, you know, you can drive the cat, the, the, the car fast. And I thought that was cool and chilling. As I got older, certain things just off of experience and off of knowledge of, listen, I could get hurt here. I don't know. I just can't, I can't see myself doing that. I'm like, what I could do when I, when I was younger, that seemed, you know, so adventurous and, and stuff. Now as an older person, I'm like, no, I'm thinking about it too much. And that's why the Bible says you want to come into this thing like a child, like a child looking to be molded. Like, like our children, our children, they, they, they go by what we teach them. That's how we have to come into the body of Christ. You understand what I'm saying to you? Because if you don't come as a child, your mindset it's going to be, wait, that don't sound right. What, what do you mean, God, um, to cast all my cares on you, to not worry about this bill, to not worry about how I, I, I'm going to, uh, 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 um, you know, how this thing is going to work out. Because the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter three, verses five through six. And in all your ways, acknowledge him for he will make your crooked paths. What? Straight. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You have a devil walking around looking to devour you, but you have authority. And the problem today is we don't understand the authority that we have. We have given away our authority in a sense of unbelief. Now, today, it is not Satan. And if for you who take it notes, take this down. It is not Satan who is really taking from you. It is your own thoughts. It is your unbelief who is taking from you. It is your own belief who is robbing you of the things that God has come for you to do. Amen. Amen. Because listen, he can create a seven, uh, my note says he can create a seminal to try to get us off a track, but he literally can't touch us. And we know that in him, it says it's on the, in the bottom of verse 18 himself and the wicked one does not touch him. He cannot touch you. He cannot touch you. Amen. Now I want to go down to Romans. I want to go down to Romans. Let's see what time we got. 620. I want to go down to Romans 12. Romans 12, okay? Uh, this is going to be a lot of reading, but like I said, this is Bible study, okay? My job is to make sure that we are girded with the full armor, okay? And the full armor is this word. I am tired of us being defeated. I am tired. Let me tell you something. All hell tried to come loose, okay? And I'm like, we just walking into the new year. I got two options. To sit there and act like how I did last year or really be about all oh, this new year, new me and be like, not today. I'm not, you know what, daughter, you want to act a fool or a little something or a little something that that's on you. Bills you don't want to line up. Okay. That's on you. 
Because as long as I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and I'm keeping God first, things have to be in alignment with what I say. If I say I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, cast out that demon, it has to flee. If I say get your hands off of my finances, God, you will restore everything that I lost. It has to be. But the only way that I can truly walk into that is if I'm girded in the word of God. It has to be more than memes. It has to be more than memes. It has to be more than we're getting our word just off of memes. And to tell the truth, even though we are live, off of lives too. And off of YouTube. Yeah, we use these things to edify, you know, as tools. But the real protection is getting in this word. Taking some time and getting to know who you serve. So when a person says, who are you? Who are you? What are the perks of being a Christian? Because every time I turn around, I just see an evil Christian. I just see a person who, who go to church all the time, gossip all day, mean as I don't know what. Don't got no fruit of the spirit. Ain't walking in love. So a person will be confused and say, no. But if you are a person that is reading the word of God, if you are a person that... Is taking the time and meditate and apply the word, then people won't be so confused as to who are we. And you won't be so confused because you would know who you are. Okay, Romans 12. Again, this is the New King James Version. Living sacrifice to God. I beseech you, the four brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your res reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There it goes again. That's why I made sure I said at the beginning, it is faith. You have to ask yourself, am I going to walk, am I going to try to walk in the fruits of the world or am I going to walk with God and receive, check this, receive the fruits of the spirit of God. Cause in God we receive, he gives us the gift of the Holy spirit. You need the Holy spirit. You need the Holy spirit. Do you understand what I'm telling you? You need the Holy spirit. You need him. You need the renewing of your mind. <clears throat> because when the enemy comes and when things come against you, it is your mind that will alliterate and say, you know what? I'm not going to punch this person in their face. You know what? This child is acting a fool. I know I want to kick this door down, but you know something? I'm not going to do it. It will give you a spirit of self-control. Those are the fruits. You know what? This relationship looks like it would never be mended again. But I, you know what? The renewing of my mind says that God can do anything. Anything is possible with God. Because the first thing that Satan does is he comes to attack the mind anyway. So when we read the, God, the, the book of the, the, the Bible... When we read the words of God, because the book is inspired and breathed by God, the Bible says. You have this sense of understanding of who you are. Amen. Who you are. It says, and do not be conformed to this world. You cannot be conformed to this world. Why do you think when people funds are not adding up, they're killing themselves? Because they don't, they don't have nobody they serving. They don't understand that God said, I should supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. They don't understand that. We just read in 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, that the wicked one can't touch you. So if you are grounded in your word, no matter how much havoc comes against you, no matter how much they try to talk about you and slander you, no matter how much they try to come at you, they can't take you down because you are girded in the word of God and you know in your heart that the evil one can't take you. He can't touch you. So that's why you sit there confidently and you be like, uh-huh. That's why the spirit of self-control comes because you know avengers is mine, says the Lord. And we're going to read that too.
Whew. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. It goes back into faith. It's pulling us back into faith because you can't be sustaining on the word if you don't believe the word. Amen. That's why in the beginning from jump, what did I tell you? We need faith because in order to, to receive anything that I'm saying out my mouth, you have to believe it. Faith is belief. Faith is hope. Faith is belief. Faith is belief. The definition of what the world says about faith. Faith, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So if you're saying that if the Bible saying we walk the just walk by faith in Hebrews 11, 6, that it is impossible to please God without faith. So faith is the foundation of everything. function so we're being many are one body in christ and individually members of on one another having then the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us let us use them and if prophecy let us prophesy so now he's trying to now he's breaking down the gifts that we have but i want to stop i want to go i want to go to to verse nine, um chapter nine behave like a christian i want to go to that because that's more geared to what we're talking about and who are we? So right now, guys, I'm on Romans 12. This is the New King James Version. Romans 12, verse 9. I'm going to start with verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Okay? Now, let's define that real quick. Because sometimes we say things and... Hypocrisy. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I want to... I want to... I want you to understand... When uh, the Bible says something, I want you to really understand the meaning of that thing. Because we just got to have it. We just say things. And um, we need to understand 
we need to understand, you know, what and why. Uh, is acting up. The devil is just trying it this morning. But we ain't giving him no. We don't give him no power. Because we got the power. <laughs> uh, what's going on here? I want to. I'm trying to give us. I want to give you this word. On what it what it means hypocrisy the practice of claiming to have a moral standards or belief to which one owns behavior does not conform pretense so you are to have a moral standard or belief to which own one's own behavior does not conform so that means that you're not saying one thing okay but your actions is doing another. So he said, let love be without hypocrisy. Hypo I, I'm checking up that word right now. So you can't say that I love you, but your actions is not showing that I love you. It says, abhor what is evil. Abhor means to regard with disgust and hatred. So he's saying that whatever is evil, you are to hate that thing. You are to move in love. You are to hate that thing. So who are we? When a person says, you say you a kingdom builder, you say you a Christian, who are you? It says that you you, you let your love be without hypocrisy. You, you, you're not ha, ha, um, hypocrisy. You're not hating a person. You're not, you're not smiling in their face and behind their back you're talking about them. Amen? You can't stand evil. You're not disrespecting, you know, you're not disrespecting and, 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 and lacking self-control. It says, cling to what is good. Verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So off the back is telling us that so many of us don't know what's going on, don't know the power that we hold because we're lagging in spirit and serving the Lord. We're not in the word. We're not in the word. Most of the time we're catching the word off a meme that is posted on Facebook or, or Instagram. We're not in the word because if we was in the word, we will understand that first John chapter five, verse 18 that we just read in the beginning told us that the evil one can't touch us. So when that's why when the doctor said I had a brain tumor, I was able to say the devil is a liar. I don't receive that. And I kept my faith. And because I kept my faith, when I went back to the doctor, they said brain, what brain tumor? They told me I had all types of fibroids and I had to get surgery. But the next thing you know, the fibroids was dried up and it's like, what surgery? When anxiety tried to hit me, I said, the devil is a liar. God, you said that I should be anxious for nothing. You have to have the word in you because that's what you stand on when life happens. What did we just read? That we can't conform to the world. The world confirms. See, this is how the world moves. When, 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 when the world gets a report from the doctor, they're into depression and this and that and the third and it eats them up. That's why most people have cancer and HIV and all these things for years. And it's once they find it out that they start receiving the symptoms. Why? Because of the mindset. The mind. Because of the mind. But we read in the beginning that we are grounded in faith. Who are we? We are Christians. We are kingdom builders. And, and we have perks that the world don't have. We call things that are not seen and they become seen. Your child acting a fool. I rebuke that. I rebuke that demon in you. I rebuke you saying you can't have my child. And you stand on that word. Your finances is acting up. I, I, I rebuke that. But then you start, you have to start applying and start reading books to help you with your finances. Start sowing. I'm telling you, it's power in sowing, especially on good ground, and it comes back.
There were some things that I had to make sure that I enumerate in my life too. So when they said, okay, brain tumor, and I started uh, uh, looking up what type of brain tumor they was trying to tell me I had, it was a hormonal type of thing in the endocrine system. And I said, oh, so this has a lot to do how I react to life. So if I don't be stressing and all that and truly give things to God, my body would, my body would start to flow in alignment because a lot of afflictions come as a result to stress and anxiety and all of these things. And it goes back into everything is spiritual. This, our whole being is spiritual. And it goes back into the foundations of believing God because if you believe God, you won't be stressed because the Bible says to cast all your cares on him. First Peter 5 and 7, I believe. Because he cares for you. It said cast all your cares. Every single thing you are to cast it on him. Verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Patience in tribulations. Continually steadfast in prayer. So these are the things that we are supposed to be doing. These are the guidelines. Who are we? How do we respond to life? How do we live our life? It told us straight up. It started with love. Told us don't be a hypocrite. It told us to hate evil. It told us to cling what is good. It told us to keep brotherly love. If we would truly respect one another and, and come to each other with a, a respect of love, there won't be a lot of things that's happening. That's why racism and all of these things exist. That is pure demonic. It is, it is rooted from the devil. It is Satan himself. Because if you are rooted in love, you won't hate somebody because of the color of their skin. You will hate somebody because of what they did to you. Amen. I love how he said patience and tribulations. So that means as you're going through things, you have to understand you serve a long suffering God. So that means that he takes his time doing things. The devil moves hastily because he just got to come and corrupt. God could take his time because he know his word is his bond. So he said, if I'm going to make you whole, if I said that, if I said this, it's going to happen. I don't have to move next week. Sometimes he moves next week. And then sometimes he moves in years because he's trying to uh, build you up. So his whole thing is to edify you, to build you up. So you can come into the full, um, manifestation of what he has for you. That's why he takes a long time in certain things. That's why he might take a long time while you're in tribulations because he's trying to build your faith. He wants you to understand that it's him and him alone who can get you through that thing. Distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality, given. Some of you know a sister and brother is going through it and, and really messed up. And oh, I pray for you. Okay, pray for them. But God says that we are supposed to be here to uplift one another. If you got a couple of dollars and you know there ain't no food in that person's house, why you can't give them $20 or say, here go 10 or here go a, a, a pack of chicken? Oh, I see, you know, you need a coat. Here go an extra coat. You know you got millions of coats. Who are we? Bless those who persecute you. That's hard. Because I'm telling you, it's people that come against me. It be your own kinfolk too. That you just want to be like, you know what? Now I'll call out a demon real quick. I don't care who you are. I will call out that demon. But then I also will pray for them. Because I know that if you were in your right state of mind. And if you had your full armor on. You would not be acting or reacting the way you do. But because you're not fully girded in the word of God. You're not you. That's why you are to pray for those who persecute you because they do not know better. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one, one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Stop thinking you better than everybody. It's the people that, it is the people that people deem to be poor and don't have all these accolades that are some of the smartest and wisest people I know. Because you have to understand that the devil blesses you too. So you guys see people with millions of dollars and all this and millions of followers. And you listening to the, 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 the Jews they think they dropping. And they sending you straight to hell with their advice. But because they, they got monetary things, you think that they're wise. No, they have just been serving Satan and Satan is rewarding them. That's a whole nother sermon. Do not be wise in your own opinion. 
Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible as much depends on you. Live peaceably with all men. So that's why people don't understand when I just shut it down. When I see that your spirit ain't right and, and you all over the place, I shut it down. I will put you out. I will stop messing with you. And people are in their feelings about that. But why? Because I need my peace. Because peace is one of the best and special gifts that God has given us. That's how I was able to receive the report that the brain tumor left because I stayed in peace knowing that God was going to heal me. Peace is everything. Can I be honest with you? Satan wants your peace. That's why he comes and disrupts. It's your peace and your promise. Those two things he wants. Peace and promise. Because he don't know how to live in peace. And he don't want nobody to receive their promise. And make it to heaven. Misery loves company. He wants everybody in hell with him. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, say the Lord. So now y'all know where that saying comes. You see how people always quote, vengeance is mine, say the Lord. That's where it comes from. It comes from Romans chapter 12, verse 19, the bottom of verse 19. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will reap coals fire on his head do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good some people just be trying to do you dirty and you how you doing and it bugs them out because they don't understand like why aren't they because i don't have to I, you know what as much as i really want to knock you upside your head and and and, and, and win this 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 argument match with you i don't even got to do it because god god if he don't convict you he will avenge for me that's why i tell people all the time be careful how you treat me be careful what you say to me because i am a woman girded in god my walk ain't phony people could say what they want oh she fake and it's, you, you say that because you're mad because i don't entertain your crap but be careful what you say to me because my God avenges. That's why a person that's really gangster, okay, a real gangster that's girded in the word of God, you don't gotta, I don't gotta be out there fighting. I don't gotta be out there yelling. Back in the day, I used to be out there. I don't gotta do that now because I know avengeance is mine. It's in the word. So I gotta argue with you. I don't got a point to prove. When you know better, you do better. Let me see how much time we got. I hope this is blessing somebody. We still got a little bit of time. Let me see something real quick. I want to read First Peter real quick, and then I'm going to wrap this up. But I just wanted to do, I wanted this to be our first teaching because in order for us to really get down in this Bible study and really um, understand the word. We have to understand who we are in the word. We have to understand God. You understand me? And when someone says to you, you know, oh, you're a Christian, oh, Christian, da, 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 who are you? Now you can have some foundations of who you are. You have to know who you are, who you serving. So some of you talking about, oh God, yeah, I serve God, the man above, but don't know nothing about him. Don't know nothing about the man above. Don't know nothing about what he gave to you freely. We learned today that the evil one can't touch us. First John chapter five, verse 18 said the evil one can't touch us. We know that there's a certain covenant we, it said it also, we also read that the veil that we see things differently. So that's why the world deems you crazy when you move by faith because they're moving off of self works. They think their job sustains them. They think their mate sustains them. You know, they don't understand. They think the medication sustains them. No. We learned that we can't conform to this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. It's time in this season, I'm telling you, in this last season... And this season here, and this new year, your mind has to be different. Okay, we keep saying, you know, that's why you didn't see me posting that 2020 vision, vision. I didn't do all of that because it sound cute, catchphrase. No, miss me with that. But this is the year of harvest. This is the year of revelation, of being revealed. But you got to believe that. 
And you can have the same mantras every year, but if you're not walking in the spirit of God, if you're not walking in faith, if you're not believing, ain't nothing coming to you. Matter of fact, before we, before, hold on, because I want to prove it to you. I want to prove it to you. And then I can, I'll read that. I want to prove it to you because let me tell you something. Satan is tricky. I'm telling you, he's tricky. And if you don't have the word in you, you're not going to have self-control nothing. You're just going to be out here a mess. And then after the fact, looking stupid, like, oh man, I shouldn't have did that. But see, when you walk in with God, you have this spirit of self-control. You have this, you have this, this knowing, like, listen, everything's going to be all right. And that's why I boldly say that I don't have a brain tumor. You know how crushed I was when they tried to diagnose me with that? I couldn't believe it. You mean to tell me I lost my husband. I have to raise these kids by myself. Then my daughter was sick. I had to believe God for a healing and she didn't need no medication. None of that stuff. But like I said, you had to apply things. So certain things she has to eat. She has to work out. Then my baby sister got shot in the head and I had to preach that and trying to uplift other people's. And then you want to turn around and tell me that I got a brain tumor? Satan don't take days off. But I said to myself that God, if I, if I sit here and I'm preaching this and I'm sitting here, I got to live what I'm preaching. And I receive nothing that the enemy says. And then on top of that, the money was funny, lights off, this and that, third. And I'm like, God, you told me to preach full time. You told me to do this. What's going on? Why are the businesses are slow? What's going on? But I had to start aligning up the word. And start believing. And next thing you know, little by little things. No brain tumor. No this. Okay. The, the house acting up. New house. Moved in a new townhouse with no money. These are the things that God can do for you. But it's all in how you believe. Let me just leave you with this real quick. This is James chapter verse 2. Chapter one, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect um, work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. That means finding fault. And it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. Remember, everything goes back to what we talked about. In faith. With no doubting. Check this out now. For he who doubt is like a wave of the sea. Driven and tossed by the wind. For let not, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man. Unstable in all his ways. So now... Now it goes into, well, mama and them been sitting in the church and they been sitting in the church and they been tithing and mama and them is dying of this and that. But what is mama and them believing? Are they doubting? Because the Bible says, if you doubt, you receive nothing. Come on, somebody. If you doubt, you receive nothing. So that means if you're praying and you're standing for a miracle, if you doubt, you receive nothing. That's why when they said that I had a brain tumor, the brain tumor couldn't manifest in itself because I did not doubt the word of God. I stand on the word of God and I said it cannot manifest. And that's why I didn't manifest because I believed it. Some of you are saying it, but you're not believing it. It has to be a duo action. Who are we? Who are we? You welcome, sis. Who are we? That's why it's very imperative for you to be in this word. So when life comes against you, you standing on this word. So now with some of the found uh, the fundamentals that we have learned this morning, now that's why you see why people are broke. That's why you see that there's so much havoc and chaos and people are lacking self-control. Number one, they don't even know who they are in the body of Christ. Number two, they don't even understand the perks that we have. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I think that's enough for today. I'm going to put here in my notes, 1 Peter. And you can read it on your own too, verses, chapter 4, verse 7. And we'll read that when we come back on um, Monday. So, and listen guys, 
Monday, Wednesdays, Thursdays at 6 a.m. I'm going to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. He told me to get back to basics. I will be sitting here every six, every morning, 6 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We will be getting this teaching. My job is to make sure that you have some foundation in you. You have the word in you. Today's topic was who are we? Who are we? We read from 1 John, those who take your notes, 1 John uh, chapter 5, um, we read um, verse 18 all through. Then we read Romans 12 all through. And then um, we ended it off with uh, James chapter 1, verses 1 through, I want to say 9. I want to encourage you, you, everybody has a phone, download the Bible app. Instead of having idle time on your job, use your time to read. And maybe you should read those verses again to get them in you so you can understand who you are. Those who want to sow on this word, I don't ask for anything. You know, it's not for me. You know, it's for you. Sowing, it really blesses your finances. I can't tell you how much sowing, especially on good soil, how much it has done for my finances. You feel like you need to sow in this word? You want to sow into me? Uh, on the, on the description is my PayPal, my cash app. So you're sewing on good solid ground. Also, if you guys have not wrote my, um, read my book that I wrote, I wrote two books, especially, uh, uh, um, the let go it's a, it tells you about my story, where I came from, the, how God has delivered me and so many things. People think they know me, but you have no idea if Alan's in a strip club, all types of things. And God has really been good to me. Good by thought, manifesting your dreams. That's a short book. Both books are short, so you read it like that. This gives you a guide on how to renew the mind because it's here is where the enemy plays. I pray in Jesus' name that this word, that it bless you. I prophesy that this word will take root in your life. I prophesy that you will apply this thing. I prophesy that today that you are looking at life differently. The Bible, we just read, we just read. That the veil, we look at things differently than the world. Now when you see a person and they're acting a fool, you know it's not that person. You know it's that demon. You rebuke that thing. You know that if the doctor tells you something that you don't have to receive that thing. You rebuke that thing. And I pray that every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 6 a.m. That you guys will be getting this word in. And if you come on late when you have time, uh, you, you, you um, watch it. And I'm going for my people on Instagram. I will save this. It will be up. My people on Facebook. Y'all make sure y'all share this thing. I pray this word bless you. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. I thank you for this fellowship, Father God. I pray that any need that it, that is needed, Father God, that you meet it in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, God, that we will all walk off with more knowledge, more power, more discernment, more understanding, Father God. We thank you of the foundation that you have set for us today, teaching us who we are in you, teaching us the covenant, teaching us the precepts, the principle, the perks, so to say, Father God. Lord, I'm praying in the mighty name of Jesus that any root that the enemy is trying to take, Father God, that you will give us territory and that we would take it back and that we denounce the plans of the enemy. Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that's watching, Father God. I plead the blood of Jesus over their home, over their mind, over their finances, over their family, Father God. We're breaking generational curses, Father God. Father God, I'm speaking generational blessings that this will be the generation that will come up, that will know the word, Father God. That we will have a real relationship with you, God. We honor you. We thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you so much that I, I, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to pour into you. Because I want you to understand that you have power and authority. Anything can happen. Anything can happen when this word is girded in you. I seen it too many times. Too many times. God bless you. Pray to slay. Listen, ladies, you girls who's trying to lose that belly fat. Listen, the waist trainer, I'm telling you, see my face? I'm looking good. My slim is, my, my, my stomach is getting slim. Everybody who has bought the waist trainer, it works. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I, I, I um, sold my truck to invest in myself and create this waist trainer. That's how serious I am about it. Pray to slay waist trimmer.com. Pray to slay waist trimmer.com. You can get the waist trimmer. We have a sale right now. All waist trainers are $55 free shipping. Okay. And while supplies last, cause I want to see you being fit. is not just to look good. It's not a vanity thing. Okay. It's a purpose thing. If you are healthy, 
If you are healthy, you can do the will of God. So many of us, we're not eating right. And then we say, oh, God's not healing. No, you have to eat right. What did I tell you in the beginning about my daughter? When they tried to diagnose her and say she was sick, what did I say? I said that he healed her, but it was things that we had to, that I, that she had to eat. When they tried to tell me about the brain tumor and I, and I did these studies on, on, on what type of brain tumor it was, I had to realize that I couldn't be stressing it. So working out relieves stress and things like that. Listen, got to go. I will see you guys, listen, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 6 a.m., guys, okay? We praying to slay. We are praying to slay. We are waking up to win. We are shaming the devil. Love y'all.